think uh, I think I knew early early on that um, I didn't want to just be a musician, you know, or I, I don't think even as if you're a guitarist or you play drums, whatever your, your instrument of choice is, I think uh, you have to you have to you have to go in as uh, as just for the love of music all around. Right. And I think and I think uh, just you know uh, when you play guitar or anything else, I was always I was always asking questions of why, even if it was Eddie Van Halen or Tony Iommi or anybody that I, I loved, I always asked why they sounded great. It wasn't just being focused on on their playing. Uh, I would always ask about what the drummer was doing, sounds of the album, you know, the arrangements of the album. So I, I think um, I think it's really important to to uh, to have that kind of vision, you know, to to look at it as a whole. What's kind of uh, what what kind of rig are you using at the moment in terms of like what's what's your favorite pedals and that kind of thing? I know there's a lot of people who want to know that kind of stuff. So is there anything that you think, yeah, that's I'm really into this stuff at the minute? Or well, probably before I answer that question, the most important thing to say is that it matters and it doesn't matter what I use at all. It's here. It's all here. All of it. Yes, the amp helps. It's it's you know it's a little bit of an interpreter and the guitar. But if you, no matter what guitar, even even when I'm up in the dressing room now and my tech, I can hear him checking my rig. I didn't even know it's my rig. It's, it's how different he sounds when he plays my rig. So, I mean, I can't answer that question of what I use, but I mean, I use an N4 that I've always played. And uh, right now I'm not using these, these amps, these heads, but uh, I'm using just a, a Marshall, uh, what am I using, Robin? <laughs> DSL 2000. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. But, uh, like, you know, look, it's important. Uh, the, the, the one thing that I've used consistently since I was about 12 is this rat pedal. Uh, it's yeah, always yeah. in the front of my, my amp, but it doesn't do anything, really. Like, it's, it's like a, it's just kind of this weird mojo thing. I don't use it for distortion. It just tightens up the bottom end. But um, if I put that in front of everything, I'm usually pretty happy. There's a specific thing that you do at the start of the riff for He Man, Woman Hater. You know, where it kind of sounds like, and, and I've never, ever worked out whether you're picking or hammering on. What what? What, what is it that you're doing to make that kind of sound that you got at the start? The bit after, after the Bumblebee section where the riff kind of kicks in. So what is it you're doing there at that point? Because I've always kind of tried to work it out. And I'm like, hmm. I can't tell you, actually. <laughs> oh! It's job security. There's too many guitar players in here. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's actually, it's funny. When you, um, the thing about being a guitarist, and I don't know if all of you can relate to that, it's, it's one thing when you're playing somebody else's stuff, but when you're doing your own thing, you, you, you develop your own quirky sort of ways to, you know, for whatever reason, to come up with the stuff that you come up with in your bedroom or wherever you are. And I think one of the, one of the most important things that has to do with the question you're asking is that for the generation I'm from, now you guys can go on YouTube and go online and you're like, I wonder what it's like to play this song. And there's about a thousand people showing you how to even probably the artist himself is like sitting there and showing you how to play. I think that's cool, but I think that's probably one of the greatest things that didn't happen to me, okay. because because we were, you know, learning off of vinyl and cassettes. You didn't have anybody showing you. So when you sat in your bedroom and you were saying, "Okay, I want to learn this Queen song today," or or a Van Halen riff, you really truly believed <laughs> that you were playing it the way they were playing it in your mind, the way you interpret it, but you didn't have anybody to look at. So the good thing about that was you would learn your version of that. As a matter of fact, when you'd see them live, they were on a different part of the neck, for instance. So they played it differently, or it, the solo wasn't even close, so the riff was done with a different attack. And it used to bum you out at first, but that's what made you play the way you played. So it was just an interpretation of what they did, and then you developed your own way of doing it. It's, uh, in the end, if you do it for the love of it, you can't, you cannot, absolutely not, do not do this for the money. Don't do it for the money, I promise you. You will not make a dime if you do this for the money. You have to go through so much first to, to, to people will only, money will come, you know, or I don't even, fame is kind of an embarrassing thing to say, but your, your success will come if you just, if you just let it, let it go. Let it go, don't do it, don't do it for the fame, don't do it for the money, don't do it because your friends think it's cool. You gotta sacrifice, you know, it's, it, it's not the sacrifice necessarily sleeping in a rehearsal space, but you gotta sacrifice your emotional sort of, everything that you have for in, in you has to go towards it or nobody's gonna believe it. And that's really the essence of all of it is like an audience wants to go with you. You take your audience with you when you perform, when you play. 
It's not about, you're not performing for them. You're not like impressing them. You're actually saying, do you want to come with me? And then they'll keep coming back to, to go on that journey with you. That, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah. 